Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial. Uh, in this one, I'll be showing you how to create this nice looking candle that you can see on my screen. Uh, a couple things to note about it before we jump into it. Um, so it has a nice little flickering light effect that you can see to it. Um, it has actually a little particle effect on the top for the flame. And you can very easily configure it on and off um, right in the blueprint editor by just clicking on it and saying enable or disable. And I'll turn the light on and off, and it'll also turn the uh, little particle effect on and off. And of course, you can move it around and you know put it wherever you want. So yeah, I had somebody request that I do a video on candles, so I figured out a pretty simple way to do it. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. So with that being said, um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. I'm just going to be doing this totally from scratch. So Epic or open the Epic Game Launcher and launch whatever version of Unreal you're on. I'm currently on 4.24.1. So go ahead and wait for that to launch. And then once you have it launched, uh, just select games down here at the bottom, hit next. And it doesn't really matter which one of these you select. I'm just gonna use the first person one and hit next. And make sure you have blueprint selected. And we don't actually need any starter, con starter content for this. So you can say no starter content. And then I will just call this uh, candle tutorial, yeah. Name it whatever you want, obviously. And go ahead and wait for that to launch. I'm gonna move this guy over to the side so I can reference it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to want to do is import some of these assets, because you notice there is an asset for the candle itself and for the flame and all that good stuff. Um, so if you look in the description of this video, there'll be a link to Dropbox that has a zip file that contains all the stuff you need. And when you download it, it should look something like this. You should have an FBX file for the candle and then four textures. So we're gonna to want to go and import those. So I'm gonna come back here real quick and in the content folder, I'm just gonna right click and make a new folder for our candle. And then inside here, we'll drag in the FBX file. So just drag that in like so. And you shouldn't have to change anything here, just say, import all. And then once you have that imported, um, you'll see it creates it here. We need to import the textures. So we can just do all these at once, just drag them all in. And you should be able to just say yes to all of this uh, once it pops up. I guess it didn't even ask us anything. All right, so it imports all of our textures. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up this texture, or sorry, set up this material so that it uh, is using these textures. So we can do that really easily, just uh, double click on the material to open it and open up a little window. And what we wanna do is just take these textures and drag them into this window. Then we can go ahead and make this a little bigger. All right, so in here, um, we're gonna want to delete this default parameter that creates because we don't need it. And drag this guy up to the top, drag this guy to the middle and drag this guy to the bottom. And this is going to go into base color this one's going to go into normals. And let me actually look at my notes to remember what order this one goes. Okay, so red goes into metallic, green goes into roughness, and B is going to go into, or, sorry, or B is gonna go into this uh, subsurface color, but you can see we can't actually, well, I guess we can drag it there, but it's actually disabled right now. And that's because we need to change the shading model to um, subsurface, and then you'll see it enables it. And then you hit apply and save. And if we go back to our candlestick model, you'll see it looks nice and pretty. Um, oh yeah, and one thing to note about these models, um, just a huge shout out. So this is actually part of a level that you can buy from the Epic Game Store, and I'll link to it just in case anybody wants to buy the full version of it. But I emailed the creator of it to ask him if it was okay if I used the model for the candle, and he said it was cool. So feel free to use it as well. Uh, and like I said, huge shout out to him. I'll have a link to his information and his uh, the full level in the description of this video as well if you want to check that out. Okay, so we can go ahead and save that. Um, oh, one thing we actually need to do, uh, open up this middle one here, the candlestick underscore M. And we need to change this to the masks. 
So it's like masks right here. And this is just telling Unreal that this RGB channel should be used as a mask. And you'll see it will automatically bring us back here and say, hey, there's an error now because you have this sampler type set to color and you need to change it to masks since you changed the texture mask. So go ahead and change that to masks as well. Um, and you might not actually be able to sell any difference, but it does, um, it's using the texture the way it's meant to be used now. Um, so yeah, so we should be good there. Um, so we have the candle. Let's see, what is the next thing? So I guess we can kind of start on the blueprint now. So if you right click in here, um, and create a new blueprint. We'll just call it or create or select actor for the parent class and we'll call it BP underscore actor and inside the actor blueprint We want to add on the left here a static mesh for the candle. So add static mesh and on the right here select the candle Like so And we also want to add a particle system and the particle system will be for the flame. So hit add component and say particle system. And make sure that it's a child of the static mesh, like so. And just drag that up here to the top somewhere. I'm gonna reduce my camera speed a little bit so I can do this more easily. And you know, just put it um, up here somewhere by where the wick is, like so. And then the last thing we want is a point light for the actual light that the candle gives off. So add component and say point light and we want the point light to be um, a child of the default scene root so drag it up here to default scene root and hit attach all right so obviously right now the point light is a little bit extreme so if you click on point light on the left um, we're going to lower the intensity and stuff so change this intensity um, to 300 obviously you can use different values um, but these are just the ones i used in the video at the beginning and then i'm going to change the light color to be a little bit more like yellow almost just so it looks a little bit more like a candle something like that and then hit okay actually i'm gonna make it a little bit more just so it's a little more noticeable there we go something like that and then the everything else we can just pretty much keep the same oh actually the attenuation attenuation radius we want to set down to 100 because we don't want it to be that um that massive so i think that is probably good and then I personally like to move the point light up a little bit above the candle. I think it just looks a little bit better. So I'm just going to put it up here. Okay, so now that we have that, um, we can't really do anything else until we create our particle effect. So we can go ahead and do that right now. So I'm just going to save all this. And then back in the content browser, we want to go ahead and right click. And we're going to be creating something called a particle system. So right click and select particle system and call this P on, or PS for particle system underscore candle. So go ahead and open this up. Now I don't use particle systems very much, so I'm sorry if I uh, take a little while to do this, but it should be pretty easy. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is come up here to required at the top. So click on this yellow required section. Um, if you don't have one of these columns for some reason, I'm pretty sure you should, but you can right click and say new particle sprite emitter and it'll add one for you. But uh, you should already have one by default, but if you don't, that's how you get it. So click on the required section. Uh, the first thing it's gonna ask for us is a material. Um, oh, we actually need to create the material first before we can do this. Um, so just go ahead and save this for now. Uh, we'll come back to it here in a second. We need to create the material for the candle first. So come back here to where we just created that um, particle system and right click and create a material and we'll call this m underscore flame and then we can go ahead and open this up and the first thing we're going to want to do is click on this over here on the left and we want to change the blend mode to additive and the shading model to unlit and that's just because uh it's kind of a special case because it's a it's a light Essentially, you know, it's fire and so it really is only going to have some emissity to it It's not going to be shaded or anything weird like that. So that's why you need to change it And the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to sample um, From this texture our candle texture. So we'll say texture Sample I believe it's called yeah texture sample And oh it already selected it for us. Look at that. 
So texture sample, and we're going to drag this into the emissive color and into the opacity. And it might be a little bit helpful if we set this to box preview so we can see it a little bit easier. So this is our candle flame, um, and that could, you know, that's good enough technically, it, but if you just leave it like this, the candle or the flame won't actually move, so it won't look very realistic. So we're going to add some really simple movement to it um, using the sign function. So to do that, uh, just right click and we need to get the text coordinates. So say texture coordinate, and it'll give you this. And we want to take the texture coordinate and we want to add to it. So say add. And then we're going to add to it um, basically. So just right click and say panner. And what this does, if you hold it down, uh, control and alt, it will kind of explain it better. But um, it basically creates or it modifies UV coordinates to create a panning or a moving effect, which is exactly what we want for a candle. And so we're going to take this uh, and we have some default values to set over here. So we're going to set the speed to 0 0.2 and the speed on the Y to 1.5. And again, you can play around with these values once you see what it does, once you have it all hooked up. And then we drag off this, we're going to take the sign of this and multiply it by some small value so it doesn't go too crazy. Uh, I'm going to use 0 0.04 and hook that into the add and then hook that up to the UVs. So now you can see we have this nice little bouncing flame with very little effort. So now that we have the material, we can actually go back and finish up our particle source. So go back to the particle source. And right here, we want to select the M underscore flame. And you might, if it if you press F, it will like focus on it if you lose track of it. So that's all I did right there is I just pressed F. Okay, so yeah, so click on require after, I guess you do have required already selected. So in required, um, there's a couple things we want to change still. Change the screen alignment to rectangle. I actually don't really know why, to be perfectly honest, but it just looks better. And I think that's the only thing we need to change there. And then click on spawn. And this will adjust the spawn rate because obviously we don't want to be spawning them like this. Um, expand the rate and distribution like I just did. And we want to change this 20 to a 2. And we can actually leave this at a 1. And I think that might be it in this section. Let me just check. This is okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, the lifetime, expand that. We can leave that the same again. Sorry, I'm not I'm not super familiar with this, so I'm kind of like going going through it a little slowly. Uh, the initial size, expand this. Yeah, we're gonna want to change this. So this is gonna be three five five, and this is just changing the initial size of the flame because um, so we'll look at the correct size when it's on top of that candle, and just set them both to three five five so that it's the same size every time. Uh, the initial velocity we can actually delete because we don't want it to have velocity. I'm going to press F again just so we can focus. And the color over lifetime, um, you can adjust this and play around with it if you want, but I'm just going to leave it like this because I think the color with the, that the texture has is a good color. All right, so now that we have that, it should look something you know like this. If it doesn't, just rewind and make sure you followed along correctly. And then just say File, Save All. And then back in our actor, we can select the particle system and we can select our PS candle. And if we zoom in, you'll see our candle is on top. We might need to move it up a little bit because it's kind of inside. Something like that looks probably pretty good. Maybe down one more. Yeah. All right. So there we have our candle. So if we drag this out into the world, um, you'll see... Oh, one thing I wanted to do was make it a little bit darker. So I'm just going to take this uh, light right here and oops, I'm going to take it and rotate it so it's below us. And then if you click on the sky, just click anywhere in the sky and hit refresh material over here on the right, it'll change the skybox and make it a little darker. And then I'm also going to rebuild the lighting real quick. Shouldn't take too long on my computer, but just to make sure you know it looks the way it should. So just give this a second. Gotta love light building. 
Almost done. All right. Now we got a nice dark scene. So if we drag in our, oh, we called it BP actor. I meant to call it BP candle. So if we drag in our BP candle, you can see that it looks pretty good. It's kind of hard to see with the um, icons here, but uh, you can see there is kind of a problem to it. Maybe it's a little bit easier to see if I play it, um, or at least what I consider to be a problem. I think it could look a little better because right now you can see it looks like pitch black and there's this weird black shadow below it and it really doesn't look quite right. And that's because if you think about it, the point light is coming right where or it's spawned right where the flame is. So it can't actually light any of the candle itself or any of this ground below it. But in reality, like that's not really how the candles look because light bounces around uh, really easily and the wax is kind of transparent. So one thing that I did to fix that is if you come to the candle and you select the static mesh and up here on the right, search for shadow, you can deselect cast shadow. And if you compile and save that and go back, you'll see that it now looks nice and bright everywhere. And of course that's because it's not actually casting any shadows. So this is kind of up to you. This is just a solution that I came up with because I think it looks pretty good this way. Um, you know, it looks more like a candle should look and sure there's no shadow to it, but who's really gonna ever notice? All right, so that's basically that. Um, now to add the flickering and the enabling and the disabling. So disable this. So to do that, um, we can just add, we just need three little variables over here on the left. We need one for the min flicker, or we should probably call this min and min intensity and this is going to be a float and it can be blueprint read only and private and we want another one of those to so right click and duplicate and this will be called the same thing but max intensity and then we want one more for enabled and this is going to be a boolean and this one we want to be instance editable so that we can edit it you know per instance of our candle and we also want it to be private as well all right so and of course you can change the default value here if you want all candles to be enabled or disabled by default i'm just going to leave mine as enabled all right so back in the event graph um actually first so let's create a function for enabling and disabling it so click on function and we're gonna want to call it set enabled like so and inside here we want to do a few things so go ahead and double click on this the first thing we're gonna to want to do is add an input parameter for whether or not we're enabling it or not so hit new parameter and call it enabled and go ahead and drag in our enabled and set it like so so it updates and if it's enabled, we want to do a couple of things. So if it's enabled, we want to make sure that the light itself is on. We want to make sure that the flame is visible, that particle effect. And we also want to, because remember how I turned on this, or I turned off shadows. So we really only want to turn that off if the light is on, because otherwise we want it to act normally and receive shadows. So we're gonna change this as well. So we can actually go back and revert this because we're gonna be changing it through blueprints. So if you go back to set enabled, we can say uh, point light, set visibility. And the visibility we want to set it to is basically just enabled. So we can just drag that in and we're gonna need this again. So I'm just gonna make a little reroute node. So that's our point light. And then again, we wanna do it for the particle system. So drag in particle system and say set visibility and that will get set to true oops that will get set to true if it's enabled so drag that in and like i was saying before we want to change the shadow casting so drag in the static mesh and say set cast shadow like so and we don't want to do this because this would actually be the opposite of what we want so we want to say not boolean and we want to hook that up like so. So now if we go back to the viewport and we click enable down here just to kind of test it out, if we deselect it, 
Um, that didn't actually work. Oh, that's because we're not actually calling it. So back in the construction script, we need to call set enabled, and we need to pass in the enabled. And compile and save. So back in the viewport, you can see that it's off because it's set to false. If we click it, the light turns on and the the flame comes back and it disables shadows. So we can also do that in the actual world. If we go back to the candle and we select on the candle, because we set it as instance editable, we can just do it right here. See, we can turn it off. And you can see when it's off, it's nice and dark because it actually is casting shadows. And when it's on, it's nice and bright. All right, so the last thing we really need to do is the flickering, which is um, pretty simple. So come back here to the BB candle. And in the event graph, um, really we don't need any of this other than the begin play. So we can delete it. And in the begin play, we just want to create a simple timeline. So we'll say create timeline, or maybe that's not what it's called, timeline, add timeline. Yeah, there it is, add timeline. And this will be called the candle flicker timeline. And from the begin play, we just want to say play. And we need to go ahead and edit this. So double click on it. And inside of here, we essentially just want to create a float track that changes, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down, you know, from like zero to one, zero to one, zero to one to emulate it flickering. And then that value is what we're going to use for the intensity of the light. So the length of five that has up here is probably a pretty good length. It will just loop every five seconds. And we wanted to loop, so click this loop. And then we want to add a float track, so click the float track on the left. And we're going to rename it to intensity because that's what we're going to be changing eventually. So inside of here, um, we're going to go from 0 to 1, just back and forth, 0 to 1, 0 to 1, or somewhere near it, all the way down to 5 seconds. So the easiest way to do that, make sure you're between 0 and 1 on the left. That's really important. So on the left, or in the grid here, just right click and say add keyframe. And the first one we're going to add, just add it anywhere, and then set the time to 0, and set the value to like 0 0.1 is probably good. And then from there, just keep doing that and just kind of do it in a pattern like I'm doing. Well, it's not really a pattern. It's kind of just random. The idea is that you're going up and down because you're simulating the intensity of the light. So the higher up you go, the more intense the light will be. The lower you go, the lower the intensity will be. So you don't really want to go above one and you don't want to go below zero because that would cause the light, you know, if you went below zero, it would cause the light to go completely out which isn't really realistic. And if you go above one, then it's gonna kind of mess up our algorithm that we're trying to write. And, you know, sometimes you can stay down low for a little while and then go back up high. There's really no wrong way to do it. And you can just adjust this if you don't like the way it looks um, later. So just go all the way down to five seconds. And then make sure when you get to five seconds that the last keyframe you add, you manually specify like you manually click on it and you manually specify that you want it at five seconds. All right, so once you have that, um, oops, I didn't mean to need that. Let's set it back to five. So once you have it set, um, it's one thing you can do to make it look a little bit smoother because right now it's really jaggedy. So if you drag or if you zoom out so you can see them all and then you just highlight them all and then you press the one key, it will change them all to use auto. And so you can see it kind of makes them curvy. And it's the same thing as right clicking on one and selecting auto because you can see right here it has a one right next to it. So the one's just a hotkey. All right, so now that we have that, we can go ahead and close this. And then back in the event graph, we can finish uh, writing the flickering. So if you remember down here, we created this min intensity and max intensity, but currently they're both set to zero, which isn't uh, super great. So we want the min intensity to be set to something like pretty low, close to zero, but not quite zero. So I'm gonna go with four. And again, you can play around with these values um, after you get it working and you see how it works. And I think for the max, I went with 50 eventually. Yeah, I did. So I know that probably seems like a big difference, but it's really uh, pretty subtle once you see it at, at work. So again, this intensity value is just a value from zero to one. And we want to convert this from zero to one to min intensity to max intensity. So to do that, we can just use the lerp function. So A is our, or the intensity is our alpha. Our min value, oh, that's not right. Our alpha 
oh, I just realized I did this wrong in my other project, so this might not turn out great. We're going to be coding live here in a second. So min intensity and max intensity, make sure you hook it up like this. The intensity should go into the alpha, and A should be min, and B should be max. Because basically what the alert function does is it says, whatever value you pass in for A, if A is 0, I'm going to use 100% of the min intensity, or whatever you pass in for A. And whatever you pass in for B, if alpha is 1, I'm going to use 100% of B. So we can take this value, and we can set the light intensity based off that. So drag in the point light and say set light, or just set intensity, I guess. Yeah, set intensity. And drag in the update, and set it like so. So, like I said, this might actually not look great, because I messed it up in my other project, and I just now realized it. So we'll see what it looks like. So we go back, and we press play. Yeah, you can see it's flickering uh, pretty intensely. And that's probably because the min intensity is actually too low. So we can just play around with this for a second. I'll try like 30 maybe for the min. Yeah, it looks a lot better. So again, you can play with these values as much as you want. It's totally up to you. Um, so yeah, I think that might be it. Let me just double check my notes to make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention real quick before we conclude the tutorial is a little optimization thing you can do that's actually really important. So if you have a candle in your game, or really any light for that matter, matter but since we're doing candles, I'll just talk about candles. If you have a candle in your game and you want it to be um, something that the player can carry around in their hand or you want to be able to move it at runtime, then you need to keep it set to movable over here. But that's actually really like expensive um, for the computer to do. It takes a lot of performance to have a light that moves around. So if you're just going to have it sit still, you want to set it to stationary. Like if you're just going to have it sit on the desk, you want to set it to stationary. And if you do that, you can see, you know, it's still it's still going to look exactly the same. It's still going to be able to flicker. Um, but you're basically telling the computer like, hey, this light's never going to move. So you can, you know, do some optimizations ahead of time to, you know, save some performance. Um, but you really don't want to set it to static because if you set it to static, it's, it's going to be a fully baked light and it won't be able to do the flickering. Um, if you don't care about the flickering, then you can set it to static, but you can see it's not going to flicker when I have it set to static because it's just baked. It's basically just baked in light. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. It's it's really important. Like you don't want to have a bunch of movable lights in your scene. It'll just kill your performance. But yeah, uh, with that being said, I think that concludes the tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.